Hello, my friends. Welcome. We are back in the epic houseplant stand. Today, we're going to be doing a houseplant care guide for this treacherous little plant right here. So if you can tell, this is English Ivy, also known as Heterohelix. This particular variety, if we get up and close and personal, is the Heterohelix Calibri. Beautiful leaves. Honestly, take a second look at those. Those look absolutely insane. Now, why would this be a treacherous houseplant? Well, the reason why is because outdoors, English Ivy actually is considered an invasive in many, many, many regions. And the reason why is because it grows extremely quickly and it doesn't need a whole lot to live well. And the final, the most important, is that it climbs. It can get up to 98, or sometimes over 100 feet tall, provided it's given the room to climb. And it does that by use of these aerial roots. So it sends out these roots and it attaches to things, and it can actually rip paint off, which you're actually gonna see in a second outdoors. But today, we're gonna learn how to care for it indoors, because a lot of the problems that we see outdoors can be mitigated if we just grow it indoors. If you follow some of the pro tips that you're about to get in this video. All right, let's get into the care guide. So here's an area where I removed some ivy and you can see if it gets a hold it can actually be pretty invasive. Just rip the paint clear off and this is the rest of it that I'm still trying to clear out. So we're going to cut to the aerial root system in a second. So here's an example of how gnarly the aerial roots can get. Now this of course is a pretty well established one that's kind of hidden away in my backyard but these here are what come out and adhere to the wall. And so here's another good example right here. If this is an invasive plant in your area, then that's why it's so important. Look, if I do that, the paint comes off uh, to grow it in a pot indoors. So it can't do this outdoors. Now, when it comes to light for English Ivy, as you can see, it's kind of hanging out up top here, but where is it positioned in the room? It's about six feet or so away from a Southeast facing window. It's going to need bright indirect light. And honestly, anything that's an invasive plant like the ivy is going to do just fine, even if it doesn't get these perfect conditions. So again, you see I've got my little ZZ plant here hanging out, and then right over there, just to get a sense of how far away to put it from a window, you've got your English ivy. Now, when we are repotting the English ivy, with most plants, it's going to be about an inch upgrade in the pot. So this has been in that pot for a while. I got this on sale at a nursery. This is slightly bigger than an inch. It's probably two inches, but you know what? English Ivy being a pretty vigorous grower is going to do just fine in a pot that's slightly bigger. It'll grow in, get used to this pot. And then I like to check the soil level by putting it in there, making sure I have the right amount. And then I pull it back out and begin to break up this root matter a little bit. So it stops root binding itself by growing around in a circle. So I like to break that up slightly. We'll put that in here. And then as far as soil requirements, what kind of soil does it like? Pretty fertile soil it's going to do well with. And so if you're making your own mix, you can do something like one third peat, one third perlite, or maybe a little less than that. And then one third compost. So this mix I'm putting in right now is something that I made myself. And I find that it's a bit more cost effective. I'm being quite sloppy with it, but that's no big deal. Um, and it's, that's just really all it needs. Almost all houseplants like this, at least, are going to do just fine in a mixture like this. Again, that being about one third perlite for your aeration. You need some potting soil or some compost for your organic matter. And then you need just a bit of peat moss or coconut coir for that water retention. And, you know, no points for cleanliness here, but is the job getting done? The job is definitely getting done. And there we go. And so after you do something like this, I like to give it a nice deep water. And then from there, we can talk about some of the other care elements for the good old English Ivy. Now, if you guys are ever having problems with your watering, one thing I like to do is hit it really quickly with a little bit of water. And then you're going to notice that it's going to start to sink in. And then I wait a little bit. I'm letting the surface tension sort of get broken of the top here, especially if it's especially dry the soil, and then it's going to be much more receptive to taking water. And so we're just going to give it a nice heavy drink, especially after a repot. We'll let it drain out just slightly, pop a saucer under it, and we're ready to go put it back into our plant stand. All right, we've got our ivy potted up. It's in a good position to thrive. Got some nice vines. These are going to kind of fall down. It'll be, it'll be looking beautiful. 
Now let's talk about some simple care stuff. So fertilization wise really doesn't need a whole lot. So long as you repot it once a year and you've given it enough organic matter in that pot, then you're in a good position because every year you'll refresh the soil anyways. So you don't really need to fertilize too, too much, especially for something that's such a vigorous grower. Give it too much, you might have it really start to expand a little too much. Water-wise, what you can do is do a soil test check. Just go one inch deep down, and if it's dry, give it a little bit of water. Be careful not to overwater though, because what you'll see is you'll see these vines start to come down, they'll droop, and they'll turn yellow. So those are your signs for overwatering. It's a pretty classic sign for most plants. Um, and then, really, that's about it. You give it the positioning we talked about for lighting, and then one thing that I noticed is pruning wise, these can tend to get very long and stretchy and maybe not look as attractive, similar to how other hanging vining type of plants will, will grow. So what you'll do is you wanna come and clip right above, so see this leaf right here? You, you would wanna clip right above a leaf node and that'll prune it out nicely. And then with these, you can actually get into propagation, which is the final thing we'll talk about before we get into some questions and answers. So if you're gonna propagate, you might as well just prune off some of these longer stems and these longer vines that maybe don't look so attractive, toss those in some water in a warm light area, wait for some roots to develop, and then voila, you've got another English ivy plant. So that's pretty much it for care. Let's go ahead and answer some commonly asked questions in the plant couch. All right, everyone, welcome to the plant couch, where we're gonna answer some of the most commonly asked English Ivy questions that I've gotten on the blog. So if you didn't know, there is a blog associated with Epic Gardening. It has care guides for almost every plant you can imagine with more coming every single week. And by the way, if you're noticing, Epic Gardening stickers are also now available to people who support on Patreon, which you will find in the link down below. Let's get to these questions though. English ivy, okay, it produces berries. Are these berries edible? Well, if you're a bird, feel free to munch away, but chances are you're not a bird, even if you might have a little bit of the attributes of a bird like me. I'm tall, kind of makes me look birdish, but I still can't eat these berries. They are really good food for birds, but for people, they are toxic, so do not eat the berries. Okay, I'm doing, this is a good question. I'm doing everything I should be doing, and my English ivy is still dying. What's going on? Well, if you're giving your plant enough light, if you're giving it enough water, if you are giving it the right soil, you're fertilizing, well, chances are you've got something like spider mites. The most common pest for English ivy is going to be spider mites. Again, I'll leave a link in the video description for how to deal with spider mites. Light misting can actually help quite a bit, but if you have a serious problem, you're gonna want some serious solutions. So check out the spider mites guide down in the description. Okay. I have a variegated English ivy plant, like our little friend right here. We've got our variegated one right here, but it's losing its variegation. How do I get it back? Well, so this is a very common problem with plants that are variegated, especially house plants. Ivy plants, along with many other plants, lose their variegation if they're either not exposed to enough light or they're exposed to too much light. In the ivy's case, it's typically if they are not exposed to enough light. And so maybe you have a location in your house that's not quite giving them the light that they need. Try to move them closer to a south or south adjacent window, southwest, southeast, something that gets a decent amount of light so that that variegation comes back. Finally, will my English ivy survive outside in the winter? I have it in a pot. Well, as long as it's a hardy plant, remember it's an invasive. So that means generally speaking, it knows how to survive. And so as long as your soil and your roots don't freeze out, then you're gonna be in a good spot. As, lo as long as you don't get a complete freeze where the roots just sort of burst, explode because the water in them turns to ice and then expands and destroys all the cell walls and all that nonsense, uh, you're gonna be in a good spot. Uh, one thing to think about though, is if you're gonna go outside, the pure green leafed English ivy or the heterohelix is gonna be a bit more hardy than the variegated variety. And that sort of rings true, I think, for many different variegated varieties. They just seem to be a little bit less hardy than their classic counterpart. So that's pretty much it, everyone. Again, if you would like to support on Patreon, I'll send you out a sticker, boom, right there, Epic Gardening, grow your green thumb. And so we've had a couple people out there. I wanna thank you, say a big thank you to Phil Coster, big time supporter, so thanks to Phil. I'll be doing a little shout outs for the Patreon people. But that's it, if you guys have another uh, plant guide you'd like me to cover, 
You want me to do some more interior stuff, some house plants? Obviously, there's there's plenty to do right here. Uh, definitely let me know. Either hit like, subscribe, or just type the comments. I respond to everyone. And until next time, guys, get your ivy on. Send me a picture of it. And I will see you on the next one. Later. Whoop.